welcome to part 2 of the Koch Fractal Senority tutorial by Peerplay. In the previous part we've set up some Ondra gizmos for the initiator, and in this part we'll continue where we left off, and start setting up the system with a line renderer and create the initiator. So we've applied the Koch initiator to the z-axis, but we'll start by setting up that we can personally change this into either x, y and z. You might wonder why we take so much time setting up the Ondra gizmos. Well, this is because we are creating a tool that we can later easily customize in the editor to make many different creative implementations. So we'll continue working in our Koch generator class. And if you look in our undraw gizmos, we are declaring the rotate vector and the rotate axis in here in the script. But instead of declaring them here, we're going to declare them based on a enumerator. So we're going to add a new enumerator and we're going to call this a protected enum and we'll call this axes. Now we've got three different axes. We've got the x axis, the y axis, and the z axis. And close this one off. And now just as we did with the initiator, we're going to say a protected axis. It's called axis, and it's going to be a new axis. And to show this in the inspector we're also going to serialize this field. So now scroll down to the get initiator points and here we've got a switch on the initiator and we're going to add a new switch on the axis. So we'll type switch and it's going to happen on the axis and in the switch we're going to say a case and the case is going to be the axis dot x axis and we'll break this now let's copy paste this three times or two times and we also need a default break and of course close off the switch statement now copy pasting stuff is really cool and all, but you shouldn't forget to change these values. So this is going to be the Y axis and this is going to be the Z axis. Now scroll up and in the ondraw gizmos we've declared the rotate vector and the rotate axis. Uh, we're not going to declare them here anymore. I'm going to copy it, uh, remove it and I'm going to paste this into the Z axis. Now for the X and Y axis we're going to use different vectors. So let's copy paste these here. So if we're on the X axis we need to set the X to 1, this to 0. And the rotate axis will then become the Z axis. And for the Y axis this will become a 1. And this will become a 0. And this will rotate on the X axis. Now let's set up a default. I'll just copy paste the Y axis into default. There you go. Now this should work. So let's save this script and go back to Unity. And in Unity you'll see that we can change it from its X axis to its Y axis or to its Z axis. So this system looks pretty good already, but there's still something I wanna change. Because when I'm going to a triangle, you can see that this line is lining up with its x-axis. But when I'm changing this to a square, then none of these lines are lining up with the transform axis. So I want to change this and based on the amount of initiator points, we are going to rotate this a little bit around. So back in our script, let's go to the top and we're going to add a new private float. And this float is going to be called the initial rotation. So before we're setting all of the initiator points, we want to do a rotation. So we're going to copy this and rotate the vector. And instead of using the 360 divided by the initiator point, we're going to use the initial rotation. Now we need to set up what the initial rotation is going to be. So we're going to declare that into this switch statement. So we're going to say here that the initial rotation is going to be zero because the triangle is already lined up. Now let's copy paste this line everywhere and we're going to set up the correct degrees for all of these. Also at the default 
To get the correct amount of initial rotation, we need to divide 360 degrees divided by the initiator point amount. So 360 divided by 4 is 90, and we're going to divide that number by 2. So the result will be 45 degrees. And on the fifth, it's going to be 72 degrees divided by 2 is becoming 36. On six sides, it's becoming 30. On the seven sides, it's becoming something like 25.71428. I've already done the calculation there. And on the eighth one, it's going to be 22.5. Now with that in place, we're going to save this script and let's check out this result. You can see that the square has flipped over and now it's aligning perfectly with these sliders. And if we're changing this to a pentagon, it has at least one side aligned to these uh, axes. And also on the hexagon, the heptagon and the octagon. So now that we're done setting up our on-draw gizmos, we can start by creating a void awake. So let's go under here and we're going to type void awake. And we can copy some lines from the on-draw gizmos that we can use in the awake function as well. So let's copy these lines and paste them in the awake. And now instead of writing towards the initiator point array, we're going to create a new array. So let's create a protected vector 3 array and we'll call this position. And this line is going to be the position and it's going to be a new vector 3 of the length of the initiator point amount plus 1. Now the plus 1 is for the last line segment returning to the start point. This will become clearer when we start to iterate through the array to create new line segments. Now inside this for loop, we need to change this initiator point to position. And now after the for loop, we're going to set the last position of position list, the plus one to its starting point. So we're going to say position. And we're going to get here the initiator point amount. And this is the last position in the array plus one because the array is starting at zero. And we're going to set this to position zero. And now we can save the script and create a new script to assign this position to the positions of a line renderer. So let's save the script and go back to Unity. And now let's create a new script, create C sharp script, and we'll call this Koch line. Now let's create a new game object and we're going to call this a Koch line. Now let's add a component and we're going to add a line renderer to this. And we're going to drag and drop the Koch line onto this object. And we want this class to inherit the Koch generator functions. So we're not going to inherit from motor behavior, but we're going to type here the Koch generator. And that will give us access to all of the protected variables in the Koch generator. And as this class requires a line renderer, we're going to say that require component in front of the public class and we need to get the type of a line renderer. Now let's make a reference to the line renderer so we're going to say line renderer is a line renderer and in the start function we're going to say that line renderer is get component line renderer now in our Koch generator script, we've created this protected position and we can use that in our Koch line. So we're going to say that the line renderer dot position count, because we've got to set the position count at first before assigning the positions. And we're going to say that the position count is going to be the position dot length. And now we're going to sign all of the positions of the line renderer at once. So let's say line renderer dot set positions. And this requires a vector tree array. Well, that's great. We've got the position. So we're going to use position here. Now that should be all. Let's save the script.
and go back to Unity. Now we'll be setting up this Koch line. Let's remove the other Koch and let's set this initiator skill a little bit higher. So like 3. Put it on the Z axis. Now let's see if we can make a line here. We still need a material, so let's create a new material for the line renderer. We'll call this line um, Koch line. And we'll set it to particles additive. Now let's add the material to the line renderer. And you gotta tick off the use world space because we're going to use local space and let's make this line loop. Now let's set the size to 0 0.5. And if we run it now, then this creates a line with all the positions. And we can move it and rotate it however we want. So if I am going to change this to a heptagon and start it, then we get a heptagon in a line renderer. For now, thank you for following this tutorial. If it helps you, give a thumbs up. And if you want to stay updated with new tutorials, subscribe to the channel. To support me creating these tutorials for free, you can choose to become a patron on my Patreon. As a thanks, you'll get access to all the source files of this and all other tutorials and extra content.